All right, so the idea for this video, uh, Ryan made a couple of threads over on Quadraphonic Quad, and I went and coalesced them, and uh, we're just gonna we're gonna rip through. So um, you started out speculating about the Beatles, like you said, let's get it over with. So let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think, like a lot of people, I was pretty disappointed this past year when it was known that they had remixed Revolver using the special technology, the demixing technology to be able to pull a lot of the elements apart. They had done this brand new mix and that included an Atmos mix and it was announced, no Blu-ray in the box set. And I right. think that's probably one of the biggest disappointments for me and for a lot of other people. So going forward, I think as long as the demixing technology is good, I think they're gonna continue working their way back through these earlier records, uh, doing new mixes, both in stereo and Atmos. But if Revolver is any indication, I think, unfortunately, it seems like they've dropped the Blu-ray for future releases, which, which now, could be a good thing or a bad thing from your perspective. You save money, but at the same time, you don't get that ownership of it that I think we love. I can't remember where exactly he hinted at it, but it may have been Twitter. But uh, due to a lot of fans expressing chagrin over the lack of a Blu-ray, uh, Giles indicated that uh, it's at least in discussion to eventually get a physical release out i would love them uh, to see them do that for sergeant pepper as well if you've heard the atmos mix um, up on apple or title it absolutely smokes the 5.1 that you know was released several years ago in the deluxe box so uh, what do you what are you thinking for this year maybe rubber soul like the yeah i think i think going forward rubber soul is probably the most likely release like, um, like maybe they'll work backwards yeah, I think I, I I think they're slowly trying to, you know, push that demixing technology. So I think, you know, the more recent albums, which Rubber Soul would be, I think is probably the most likely indicator. And then if things continue to go well, then maybe they'll continue working their way backwards. All right, moving right along. Riverside, ID Entity. Yeah, um, so this is a brand new record uh, from Riverside, and uh, this is going to be kicking off, one of the releases that's going to be kicking off 2023 in January. It's a deluxe edition, I think, with uh, both the 5.1 and an Atmos mix, and uh, from what I understand, you can pretty much pre-order it right now from pretty much any major retailer like Amazon or Burning Shed or whatnot, so I think that'll be a good one to look forward to soon. I am definitely interested in in checking out whether like this is a an excellent mix. I think it would be really great. They've been in the surround uh, community for years. Definitely, yep. A lot of people are speculating about Dark Side of the Moon 50th anniversary. Mhm. Mm well, uh we did just discover um you know through some sleuthing around, we did discover that uh apparently an Atmos mix of Dark Side of the Moon has been completed. So I think it'll definitely be part of any 50th anniversary set that they put together for the album. And the album originally came out, I think, March 1973. So if they're really trying to hit that anniversary date, I'm thinking we should see this new Atmos mix of Dark Side sometime within the first half of this year for sure. Nice. Now, uh, my history with Dark Side and Surround, I love Alan Parsons' original quadraphonic mix. I am pretty tepid on James Guthrie's later 5.1 mix. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm almost like like on the point of maybe of burnout, of like caring about, you know, a, a, an immersive mix for Dark Side. But then again, it is Dark Side. And as long as like uh, we didn't get that and then they abandon other surround efforts, like I, I'm interested in The Wall, Final Cut. Depending on when they release this Dark Side of the Moon 50th anniversary edition, it's possible that we could still see a 5.1 mix of the wall released um, later this year. We know one's been completed. Um, so I think in this case, it's more a matter of when, not if. And uh, I think between the two, I think a lot, a lot of people like myself are really hoping and looking forward to the wall even more. Ever since the release of Animals, I, I am now officially on board with, with wanting to check out what they've done with the wall. I am just absolutely in love with the Animals 5.1 mix. Same here. It was fantastic. Definitely one of the best of last year for sure. All right, all right, all right. Catatonia, Sky Void of Stars. Yeah. So, um, you know, those are familiar with Catatonia, sort of a, you know, symphonic progressive metal group, almost kind of in the, the vein of Opeth. Um, this is going to be a 5.1 and a Dolby Atmos mix from our friend Bruce Sword of the Pineapple Yes. Theme. 
That's right. And uh, as far as I know, I haven't really seen this one listed on too many retailers yet. So I don't know if this is just exclusive to one site. So as far as I know, I, I did actually pre-order this mm -hmm. and I did it from their site. I did so after hearing back from Bruce mm -hmm. that um, he he is pleased with the Atmos mix. He did have stems to work with, okay. but is satisfied. All right. So orbital optical delusion. Yeah, don't don't really know too much about this group at all, but um, this is, I think, the sixth release in the Super Deluxe Edition Surround Sound series. So uh, shout out to our wonderful friend, Paul Sinclair, who runs that website and runs the store for getting these hey, Paul. releases out there. I mean, I think I, I've, I've bought a couple of them so far, uh, but so far this looks like another one that, you know, I may want to check out and people might want to check out, especially since yeah. once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, and then speaking of which, there's simultaneous, I guess, uh, I've ordered the concert for George. Mm -hmm. I have too. Even though, even though there's an existing concert Blu-ray, uh, it seems uh, well confirmed that this is a new aggressive Atmos mix. Yeah. And uh, with added material like inserted in line in, in, in the concert as it sequence that evening. So um, you get the opening acts including Monty Python and the Shankars and then the full concert and an aggressive surround mix. So, I mean, I'm very, very excited about that. And yeah, I uh, am, am very supportive of the SDE surround series. I'm so glad that Paul's doing that. I couldn't be happier about it. And uh, definitely looking forward to any, any inkling about what may be coming up in that series this year. No, I think, honestly, I think one of the things that's kind of been most exciting about this series, whether you like, you know, all of the titles that have been released or forthcoming or not, is the fact that they've all been pretty varied. I mean, they started with Tears for Fears, The Tipping Point, which was definitely one of my favorite releases of last year. They had the ex-propaganda release. They had Gilbert O'Sullivan, which was pretty different. The Shakespeare Sisters, Brian Eno. Yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, they've he's just been all over the map in terms of you know what he's been able to license and release. So um, I love the Eno Blu-ray, mm -hmm. love it, and Tears of Fears too. Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Rick Wakeman, Gallery of the Imagination. Yep, uh, I the... really enjoyed his last record, uh, mm -hmm. The Red Planet. I, as far as I could recall, that was an upmix. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. I, 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 think, I think the is... last couple of surround releases have been have been up mixes. See, I don't know if this new one's going to be a full, fully discreet mix or not. But yeah, it might be something worth checking out because I mean, hey, he's the Cape Crusader. You got to love him. I'm excited about it. Uh, just with a little bit of, uh, you know, caution. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I we'll see if it's a, if it's a great mix or not. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, Stephen Wilson. Yep. Uh, so we Codex. We... Exactly. Yeah, that the title was uh, revealed last year in his book, Limited Edition of One. So that was the first time that we got the title of the record. Um, current release date is not exactly known. My best guess is because they're doing the Porcupine Tree Dead Wing set at the beginning of March. My guess is that Steven's record is probably either going to be late spring or early summer at the earliest. But from what I understand, it sounds like it's basically about done and ready to go. And because it's Steven, we know it's be a 5.1 mix and Atmos mix included. And it's probably going to be quite an adventure of music for sure. I am certainly intrigued by what he's had to say about it at this point. I uh, definitely didn't like the Future Bites that much. So yeah, we have Harmony Codex, probably a live Porcupine Tree concert video. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I, I could be wrong, but I think probably the progression for this year, if we get all of them, is going to be, you know, Dead Wings first and foremost, the deluxe edition of March. Then probably Steven's solo record, maybe around the middle of the year. And if that happens, then maybe, yeah, we could get the closure continuation live release towards the end of the year, because... They did film a show in Amsterdam. Ooh, and, nice. I mean, that's definitely a release I'm looking forward to because it was definitely one of my favorite shows of last year. I went to the one in Chicago and it was definitely a great experience for sure. I missed it. So um, it would be a real treat for me to, to be able to, to experience it in some, in some form. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Depeche Mode. This one is very speculative, right? 
It is, yeah. All, all we know right now is that there will be a new Depeche Mode record released, I think, around the end of March, uh, early April. It's going to be called Memento Mori. It's also the first record that they've made uh, since the passing of one of their members, Fletch, who died uh, middle of last year. And the interesting thing is that apparently they decided on the album title before he died, but Memento Mori is actually Latin, I think, for I think they translated it as Remember You Must Die. So Holy smokes. if they really decided on that title before he passed away, then that is a very eerie coincidence. But uh, I put that one in the thread just because even though the last Depeche Mode record Spirit was not released in Surround, I have a feeling because they're a pretty strong Surround band that I think at the very least they'll probably mix this one in Atmos and we'll probably get it at least on streaming to enjoy. I hope that's the case anyway. Me too. I've been meaning at some point to do a Depeche Mode in Surround video and that would be quite an undertaking i i have maybe what around a dozen depeche albums in in surround so yeah i was disappointed that they skipped one but hopefully they'll get back on track it's hard to know yeah. why that happens with labels yeah who knows labels but, are the uh, artists absolutely but yeah no you're right i've got yeah i've got pretty much every every record that they released in surround so far which is all but one i've got all of them so yeah if it's quite a big chunk of my catalog and i enjoy them a lot Okay, Peter Gabriel, mm -hmm. I.O., is that how you're reading it? That's right, yeah. Um, apparently, this has been the title of a supposed record for Peter Gabriel for like the last 20 years. Like, that's basically how long he's been working on it. But apparently, that is actually the name of the record. Mm -hmm. And I actually just saw today that uh, he's actually releasing the first single from the album tomorrow. So Holy crap. Exactly. So we'll 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 be ah. able to get a, yeah. So we'll be able to get a first real preview of whatever Peter Gabriel's got in store for us starting tomorrow. In terms of surround, who knows? Again, this one's kind of a little bit of a wild card. Peter seemed to be in the surround really heavily for a while, and then kind of got out of it. Um, again, I think like the Depeche Mode, maybe there's a possibility that they'll do an Atmos mix for streaming. We'll yeah, you know, I have some hope, uh, if not for anything else, because of Big Big Train doing mm -hmm. stone and steel at real world studios mm -hmm. uh and then that that being a, a massively impressive surround mix so mm -hmm. there's some connection there and then peter did his last album in surround up yeah yeah 20 20, 20 years ago so it's been actually a little more than 20 years ago so yeah it's been a it's been a long wait hey but we still we have momentum on our side for this one we do Even if yeah. it, it's 20 years in the making all right so um Pineapple Thief, Bruce Sword. Mm -hmm. um, we could be looking at a Pineapple Thief album, maybe a solo album. Uh, but there's a strong indication that uh, Back Catalog Box Set Volume 1 is coming out. Uh, Pineapple Thief Back Catalog. And uh, yeah. with, with, with immersive mixes by Bruce himself. Yeah, exactly. No, from what we've heard, apparently this set would comprise of the first six Pineapple Thief records. Brand new remixes, 5.1 and Dolby Atmos from Bruce. So yeah, I mean, for those for those who are familiar with the Pineapple Thieves music, I got on to them right at the time that they started mixing their albums in Surround, which coincidentally was also when they brought in Gavin Harrison on drums. So it was both of those things together that really got me into the band. But you know, they put out that that live uh, package where we stood. Yeah, which had an EP, an album at least two different surround mixes of the concert itself. And then like some stuff in stereo, like, I mean, it was the, the strongest value for a surround release I, at, that I had ever seen at that point, And it probably still is. No, I agree. Um, I have strong memories of that one because uh, that Blu-ray was authored by Neil Wilkes. And that was actually right around the time that he asked me to actually join their testing crew. And that was actually the first release that I think I tested for him with the guys man talk, trial by talk, fire yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean I 20 think hours later yeah well yeah exactly i think uh, i think the most a blu-ray disc is able to hold is 50 gigabytes and i think that one was 49 gigs you know trying to download and burn it and test it but yeah no it was, it was so much fun going through that one i really enjoyed that a lot yeah so you know we talked about bruce earlier with the catatonia mixing i'm glad to see him picking up uh remix stuff for other groups He's been interested in that for a while. And then um, I also just love his material. So yeah. bring it on.
bring it on. Couldn't make me happier. I all right. Agree. So, all right. So now, uh, it's still talking about remixes. Mm -hmm. Next uh, topic is Stephen Wilson remixes. Uh, it looks like there are quite a few anticipated. There always are. I mean, every every year, you know, when I do like, you know, one of these, you know, sort of looking forward to threads. Yeah. There's always a category called Stephen Wilson remixes. And there's probably at least like four or five different releases, four or five different artists in there. So, yeah, it, it, it seems like he always keeps really, really busy with these remixes for us, thankfully. Heck, yeah. So uh, we have the who who's next. Slash yep. Lighthouse. Uh, what? How? What's the title? Lighthouse. Is is that the sessions? Uh, it's um. It's it's Lifehouse. And yeah. So what happened Lighthouse. was is that what happened was was that after the Who released Tommy and then they toured it and it was a big success. Um, Pete started working on this next uh, conceptual record and story, which was called Lifehouse. And a lot of the songs that made up that story and that concept ended up being on the album Who's Next. The reason I think that Lifehouse wasn't fully realized as a concept and as a concept record was because I think the rest of the band really couldn't get behind the concept or they didn't really understand it. It didn't really make sense to them. So what ended up happening was they're working with, you know, producer Glenn Johns, and they basically take a lot of the strongest songs from that Lifehouse concept and created a very focused single album, which ended up being the Who's Biggest Record, Who's Next? Yeah, it uh, it's one of my favorite records. It's I, it's one that I can point to as just being a perfect record. Stephen Wilson did an interview on the um, on the Mersive Audio website. Um, uh, one of our friends, uh, you know, interviewed him, and he, I think he mentioned in that interview that when it comes to who's next, besides the album itself, I think there's a close to like fourteen other songs you know, or tracks that he's remixed. So yeah, from what nice. I understand, this this box set, you know, this remix that he's done should not only encompass the album, but should encompass a lot of additional material. So I would say right now, if anything, this is probably the most anticipated release for me so far this year. Yeah, and really, this is what I had in mind when I was talking about helping people, giving, giving people time to budget, because like, uh, there's no standalone Blu-ray for this one for me. Like, it's the full, it's the full thing. Yeah, it's the full absolutely. thing. Got to have it. I'm pretty stoked. All right. Mm -hmm. And so then um, Jethro Tull, Broadsword and the Beast. Is that confirmed? Yeah. So um, we know that the remix is finished. We know that Stephen Wilson did it. It was one of those releases that should have been out in 2022 because the original album came out in 1982. But, you know, pandemic, manufacturing backlogs, whatnot, they pushed the release to this year. Um, from what I understand, so the original Broadsword and the Beast album was 10 songs. And as yep. far as I know, the whole record's been remixed. But I think there's probably close to, um, you know, maybe 20 additional tracks you know that were written and recorded in various stages so yeah no there should definitely be uh, a lot of material in this set as well i love broadsword and the beast that beastie <laughs> so i'm in yeah. so we'll see what what wilson does with that absolutely um ultravox okay yeah i mean look uh this one's kind of speculative it's not really confirmed at this point but uh stephen wilson did remix uh vienna and he did remix rage and eden um, Quartet is the following record. It was originally released in 82. So like Broadsword, if they were trying to hit the 40th anniversary, it should have been last year. But um, I still have hopes that uh, they're that, that they're going to continue these remixes with Quartet because I've been impressed with the remixes so far. Um, also, fun fact I learned about Quartet recently is that uh, for those who don't know, it was actually produced by Beatles producer George Martin. Ooh, nice. All right, so Tears or Fears, uh, Elemental or The Hurting, uh, those are both speculative? Yeah, because The Hurting, they did a 30th anniversary box set for The Hurting about 10 years ago, um, and it didn't contain any surround sound or any immersive audio. But other than that, right. I think it pretty much contained almost everything they could have released. My feeling is that they're probably, if they're going to put out anything from Tears for Fears this year, it'll probably be a box set for Elemental. Um, it came out in 93. This year's the 30th anniversary. It was actually the very first record that featured Roland Orzabal basically on his own, because before that they were a duo. 
Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that if they release anything this year, it'll be a 30th anniversary set for Elemental. New 5.1 and Atmos mixes, hopefully, from Stephen Wilson, like the rest of them. Okay, Gentle Giant, Interview, and The Missing Piece. Yep, so again, you know, Stephen Wilson's been working on remixing Gentle Giant albums for almost the last 10 years. Um, I think from what I understand that um, both remixes for these albums, Interview and The Missing Piece, that they're either completed or close to being completed. Um, I think if we're going to get one this year, it'll probably be Interview because that's the album that follows Freehand. Freehand was the last remix that we got. Um, oh, man. And the, the Atmos record. mix of Freehand is probably one of my, it's, a, it's, a, it's among my top Atmos mixes. I love it's it. It's a really good one. Yep. It's a really good one. Now, I have high hopes for both of them, but particularly for Interview. Um, it's a little bit of an underrated record, but um, I have a lot of appreciation for that one. All right. Grateful Dead. Yeah, so this was a big surprise. Uh, all of a sudden last year, Stephen Wilson said, hey, I've remixed American Beauty and Atmos. You know, it's available for streaming. Uh, no physical release yet, but um, according to what he said in his post, it sounds like he's not only remixing other records of theirs, but that uh, whatever he's doing, whatever he's remixing could be potentially released in the future in a physical form. So if that's the case, that's definitely something I'll check out for sure. Knocking on wood. Uh, okay. ABC. This is a group that I don't know anything about, so please educate me. <laughs> you know, I mean, honestly, I've only kind of gotten to know a little bit about them and about this particular record, The Lexicon of Love, only just recently. And the only reason why was because somebody found out that Stephen Wilson had done a remix of it, and it's supposed to be coming out as part of a set this year. Uh, so probably a new 5.1 and um, Atmos mix. It's definitely, for those who haven't really heard it, um, I would probably say the closest comparison group or sound wise that I've heard to ABC so far from listening to this record would probably be Duran Duran. It's definitely kind of got that very plush um, new wave eighties kind of sound. It was produced by Trevor Horn. And I mean, as far as I'm concerned from what I've heard, almost anything that Trevor Horn has produced sounds incredible anyway. Uh, so yeah, this, th this will be a nice release to fully check out once we get it. Okay. I'm interested. And then we have a few more just very miscellaneous um, rumor remixes. Uh, Gilmore, The Cars, Aha, XDC. Yeah, so um, somebody found out from a, a Stephen Wilson video interview where he was talking about some uh, headphones that he used for Dolby Atmos mixing. You could uh, I don't know how somebody found this, but you can sort of hear a David Gilmore solo track playing in the background in one of the clips when he's testing out the headphones. I think it's a track from his first record called There's No Way Out of Here. So, of course, okay. once somebody found that out, now there's, you know, rumors that Stephen's um, remixed that record and maybe his other uh, early solo record from Gilmore is called About Face. So we'll just have to see about that one. Um, as far as the cars go, I think the reason that was in there was because uh, somebody went to a talk uh, that Stephen Wilson did about his um, Atmos remixes. And there was, you know, kind of screen in the background with various uh, album covers floating around of album that he's remixed. And somebody saw that first album from the cars up there. So interesting. That's the reason why that one's in there. And then as far as uh, AHA goes, uh, so we do know that uh, Steven's already remixed their big hit, which is Take On Me. Uh, right. There's an Atmos mix of his that's streaming right now. So there are some rumors that maybe we'll get a full, you know, Atmos remix of the complete record at some point, which I believe is called Hunting High and Low. Paul Sinclair, if you're listening, <laughs> you know Please. what to do. You know what to do. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we will support you. And now XTC, I have had some correspondence over time with uh, like the head of their fan club. And uh, for a while, it's been rumored that we would are, are looking at some more surround series um, issues, but like it's been a while. Yeah, I think I think part of the big problem is that um at least for some of their records from the 80s that have remained unreleased in remix form, like English Settlement, Mummer, Big Express, Promise right. Tapes. Either they can't find all the tapes for those albums, or they found some tapes, but not the others. Um, so I think, I think that's one of the reasons why we have sort of seen a lack of XTC releases is that they're still looking for the tapes. One of the other ones that was, I think, supposed to be worked on for a remix was one of their more recent ones called Apple Venus. Yeah. Uh, that one doesn't have tapes, 
it's got files. But apparently, you know, again, that album was recorded, you know, released a little over 20 years ago. Apparently, right. like, you know, some files still exist, some are missing, you know, they've got some parts, they're missing uh, others. So, God. yeah, um, I, I, of course, I don't think anybody was thinking about that, you know, when they were doing the record, you know, back 20 something years ago. So who knows? Right. The XTC releases, as far as Steven's remixes are concerned, have been some of my absolute favorites. I love pretty much all their records. So whatever they want to give us, bring it on. I'm ready for it. Same. I'm in. All right. Elton John, don't shoot me. Just a sort of little bit of a history. So with Elton John, we got a, a bunch of his classic albums mixed in 5.1 by Greg Penny. They came out on the SACD format about 20 years ago. And then almost nothing since then. Now, this album, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player, this was one of a few other albums where Greg Penny apparently did 5.1 mixes of as well at the time, and they haven't come out since, not on SACD, DVD, audio, Blu-ray, nothing. Would that also include Caribou, Blue Moves? Yeah. Carib I, think, I think the others were uh, Caribou, Rock of the Westies, and Blue Moves. Okay. So those, those four, along with the others that were previously released, that pretty much sums up... Um, the sort of classic Elton records from the 70s produced by Gus Dudgeon. So last year when the Mad Man Across the Water set came out, it had a 5.1 Blu-ray with it. You know, I naturally, along with a lot of other people, started to speculate about maybe future box sets, including Don't Shoot Me. Apparently there's somebody over on the Steve Hoffman forum who knows someone who works at Universal Music who said that now they are apparently putting together a Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player box set for its 50th anniversary this year. And they are looking at including the unreleased 5.1 mix on Blu-ray. So if that's the case, then this will probably be one of the biggest and most anticipated releases this year for a lot of people, including myself. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm among those who has been just hoping for those unreleased Greg Pennies to hit the, the light of day. I love Don't Shoot Me. I've got a few copies of it on LP and uh, would would love would love to hear that surround experience. Uh, the Elton John SACDs are amongst the best pop surround mixes on anyone's list as, as far as I have heard. Yeah, I agree. So, yep, I think uh, if this one does happen, it'll definitely be one of the ones that I think I'll enjoy the most and a lot of people enjoy the most this year. Same. All right. So esoteric. Yep. So um, those who are familiar with this label know that uh, they are big fans of surround sound. And we've gotten a lot of great surround mixes from this label over the years. It's um, headed up by a guy named Mark Powell, who I know is a big, big fan of surround. And they're going to start off 2023 with a really, really big bang this year because in January, they have the reissue of Barclay James Harvest album once again, uh, remixed by our friend Stephen W. Taylor. Um, so if anybody likes Barclay James Harvest music, like, you know, his remixes, that's definitely going to be one to uh, look forward to just coming out in a few weeks. Yeah, I've got the original quad. Same. And um, from what I understand, the set will have a fresh Stephen W. Taylor mix uh 5.1 i believe yep um and it will also have the original quad i don't know if it is discrete and decoded or if you'll need to decode it uh the version i have is is sq or qs mm -hmm. i think I, I think from what i understand i could be wrong but i think uh the quad mix will be on the blu-ray in discrete form from what i understand oh um, man so that'd be excellent the case, then you know classic quad mix and the new 5.1 remix so yeah it'll definitely be i love it for, for, for sure ah, i love it i love it uh very excited about that and then uh looks like also alan parsons project maybe some bill nelson and definitely some hawkwind yep so um that is another one that we know for sure and one that a lot of us have been waiting on for several years myself included so end of february esoteric are actually going to release a box set of the classic Alan Parsons Project records, The Turn of a Friendly Card. This will Yay. be a CD Blu-ray set, a brand new 5.1 mix from Alan Parsons himself. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with uh, Alan Parsons Project albums and also familiar with his surround mixes, you know he's one of the best at it. And so 
that's going to be one to look forward to. One thing I will add that we just found out a few days ago, um, if you're not wanting to spring for the three CD Blu-ray set that's out at the end of February, apparently they will be putting out a single Blu-ray disc edition in May. So you can yep. save a little bit of money if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer and get just the Blu-ray of the 5.1 mix on its own. But yep, another one that uh, will definitely be one of the best, I think, of this year for sure. Yeah, I was thrilled uh, to see that they're persisting with the standalone Blu-rays. That's such a huge thank you and blessing to to fans. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I think that probably uh, folks that have gone in for the box sets in the past will probably continue to do so. And folks like me that have only the standalone Blu-rays will probably continue to do so. So it's it's great to have the choice. Uh, yep. It'll be tough to wait a few months. I, I'm not going to lie. It'll be I, I really do love this album. Uh, that'll be tough. That'll be tough. But it's it's good. It's good to have the options. That's a good problem to have. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then we mentioned. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of speculation, but we do know that Esoteric have been working quite closely with Bill Nelson, Bill Nelson being the lead singer and songwriter of the 70s band Bebop Deluxe. They right. did all the reissues of the Bebop Deluxe albums. They did the box set for Bill Nelson's Red Noise, which was the group he had after Bebop Deluxe, the album yep. Sound on Sound. Um, so we, we we don't really know what, if anything, they're going to do from there, but... Um, if you go on Wikipedia and you look at his discography, I got to say it almost rivals Stephen Wilson's just in terms of the number of records that that that, that man has put out. So I have no clue what they're going to do next with him, if anything. But um, I've loved everything they've put out so far. Those Stephen W. Taylor remixes have just been some of the best of the last couple of years. So I'm sure whatever they continue with, if anything, will be uh, good stuff to look forward to. All right. Hawkwind. Hawkwind, yeah. So um, previously we had a 5.1 mix of the album Warrior on the Edge of Time from Stephen Wilson that came out about 10 years ago, and then right. pretty much nothing since then. Right. Then all of a sudden, about a week or two ago, we find out that they're putting out this pretty big box set, which covers their albums, I think, from 77 to 79. The albums in question are... Actually, I don't have them pulled up, so forgive me. I forget their titles, but um, there's going to be three albums in this box set from the late 70s all remixed by Stephen Wilson new stereo and 5.1 mixes so if you're a Hawkwind fan that's definitely gonna be something to check out and it's gonna be on blu-ray as well too so it's box set with I think eight cds two blu-ray discs a lot of material to go through it sounds like on that one that doesn't sound inexpensive <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't but it looks like but but it looks like there's a lot of good content um in there so it, it looks like a set that will actually be worth the money that they're asking for, I think. All right, so Zappa, Overnight Sensation, maybe Apostrophe. Uh, both are speculative. That's right, yeah. So um, I think one of the biggest surprises, but what ended up being one of the best releases of 2020 was one that actually just came out a few weeks ago, the box set Waka Wazoo. It had both of his albums, Waka Jawaka and The Grand Wazoo, fully remixed, new 5.1, new Dolby Atmos mix, fantastic box set. I think they could probably do something similar with both Overnight Sensation and Apostrophe. And the reason I say both of them is that apparently, even though those albums came out, I think about six months apart from each other, um, Overnight Sensation, I think, was like September 73. And then uh, Apostrophe, I think, was around the following spring. Okay. Apparently, both of those records basically came from the same recording sessions around that exact same time. So... I think they could either do just an Overnight Sensation set, or maybe they could combine both Overnight Sensation and Apostrophe together. And another thing love it. as well, too, is that apart from the fact that, you know, hopefully we would get new 5.1 and Dolby Atmos mixes of both of those records, a lot of people may know that both of those records were actually released in quad back in the 70s. The quad mixes were done by Zappa himself. Yeah, I've, I've actually got Overnight Sensation on okay. CD4. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard either of the quad mixes, but uh, I love both of those records. They are just wacky and fun. And so, yeah, if they do anything close to what they did with the Waka Wazoo set, I'm in. I've been absolutely loving it. Yep. Amazing. Uh, even the CDs, the material on the CDs, just phenomenal. 
All killer, no filler in that set. Yep. Correct. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. All right, so Marillion, season's end. Yep, so those who are familiar know that over the last five or six years, Marillion have been putting out deluxe editions of their first eight albums. This was all while they were on the EMI label. So this started basically, I think, around 83 or so with the first Marillion record where Fish was the lead singer, going on to the mid-90s, uh, where by, by that point in time, Steve Hogarth had already joined, and they had done you know four records with him. So out of those eight uh, records that they made for EMI, we have seven of them so far as deluxe editions. So that only leaves one left, and that's Season's End. Season's End originally came out in 1989, I think, and it was the very first album that featured their new, but still current lead singer, Steve Hogarth. Right. And uh, it's, it's, it's a favorite of mine. There's a lot of Marillion songs on that album that I really love. So yeah. Any idea and, who mixed it? You know, I'm not 100% sure. I think I saw somewhere that that is going to be a Michael Hunter mix. Michael Hunter did oh, okay. some recent records and I think also did Afraid of Sunlight as well. Um, Stephen W. Taylor remixed Holidays in Eden and it was... I'm in love with that favorite. mix. Yeah, it was a great mix for um, for 2022. So, But yeah, not 100% sure, but I think I think they've gone back to um, to Michael Hunter for this uh, for this upcoming release from what I know. Okay, and speaking of Fish, he has a live release coming out soon, uh, Vigil's End. Yep. Uh, but I've also heard that he has greenlit his back catalog for being remixed into Atmos. And uh, there are at least several of his, his albums that I would just die to hear a great immersive mix for. Same, yeah. I mean, I've... I've gotten pretty familiar with um, his work with Marillion. You know, those first four albums Marillion released where he was the singer. We've got all of them in 5.1 now. I have all of them. I love all of them. Not really that familiar with his uh, solo stuff yet. I have that live set, um, which should be coming in in the next few weeks, I think, to my house to check out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love his work with Marillion. Uh, the little bits of solo stuff I've heard from him are great so far. Um, but yeah, it sounds like we could get a bunch of his solo records from over the years uh, remixed, not only in 5.1, but it looks like Atmos as well. Yeah, personal favorite for me would be Feast of Consequences. And if I recall, he did a project with Stephen Wilson. Yeah, I don't, I can't remember the exact um, records that they worked on together, but I think it was sometime in the mid 90s. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right. Stephen Wilson did do some production and some mixing work for him. So some some cool connections, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Yep. Uh, okay. Rush signals. I just did my own personal 40th anniversary, uh, you know, celebration video, uh, like a couple weeks ago, just because 2022 was ending, and I was listening to a shit ton of signals, uh, bootlegs, and just reading, you know, tour tour books, and just kind of reminiscing. So I just wanted to do a personal celebration. It doesn't mean that they won't do a delayed uh, anniversary set. I, I really hope they will. I think the only thing that I've heard so far, um, again, this was, you know, a different person uh, posting on the Steve Hoffman forum. But from what I understand, someone on there who's kind of tangentially connected to Rush producer Terry Brown said that Terry apparently is working on mixing a live show or a combination of live shows, you know, that would yes. be that release. Yes. Yes. Um, Please. So, you know, as, 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 as people kind of know, you know, we got the 40th anniversary set of moving pictures uh, yep. in 2022, a year late, mainly I think because of the pandemic and whatnot. Um, but right. I, I would hope, you know, and it sounds like they will, you know, keep continuing with this 40th anniversary series. So yeah, if we get the signal set this year, again, a year late, um, hoping for new 5.1, new Atmos mix, because I don't know about you, but um, I finally got the uh, 40th anniversary Rush moving picture set a few weeks ago, kind of like as a Christmas gift for myself. Um, it's like the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, it's one of like the biggest sets I've ever bought. But at the same time, I think the new 5.1 mix, can't really comment on the Atmos, but I think the new 5.1 mix, I'm enjoying more than I did the original one. So I'm I can, hoping the same trend would continue with signals. 
I can vouch for the Atmos. Uh, I originally uh, only streamed it, and I bought the vinyl deluxe set uh, for you know the remastered album, and then Terry Brown's uh, complete mixing of a of the of the Toronto 1981 live show is now, in my opinion, like the greatest Rush uh, live release that there is. Uh, Terry Brown also did live mixing for Permanent Waves uh, live material. So, uh, man, uh, signals like amongst diehard Rush fans, like live signals um, material uh, at all has been like the most sought after Holy Grail. Uh, so even just to get that uh, would would definitely um, count me in to get any officially released, you know, New World Tour material, uh, especially if it's mixed by Terry Brown, because he has just killed the last couple of live mixes that he's done for them. Um, in my opi opinion, Richard Chickie has just nailed the Moving Pictures Atmos mix. Um, I loved it streaming so much that I I put out my, you know, my 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 wish list and everything. And like, finally, um, I, what I did is I bought the 40th anniversary complete super duper deluxe set, extracted the Blu-ray, then sold all the rest of it. Sans Blu-ray, um, almost made up my money. So I, it, you know, it didn't cost me that much for the Blu-ray. And then, like I said, I already have the vinyl set. And I, I also bought like the three CD set so I can rock the concert in the car. Uh, oh man. Signals set would just thrill me like obviously yep it would be a good one for sure all right the band um okay so yeah this particular record moondog matinee i really don't know anything about it um the only thing i really learned about it is that apparently it's an album of all covers so from what i said i don't think there's any original material on that record but the reason i put it on the list was because it was originally released in 1973 so this year would be the 50th anniversary um, as many people know, we got the previous four albums from the band fully remixed um, by Bob Clear Mountain. Most of them are just in 5.1, but the last set cahoots as a 5.1 and an Atmos mix. Um, I mean, they're ju they're just great mixes. I yeah. mean, B Bob Clear Mountain utilizes the the center channel a lot in his mixes, but apart more from than, that, more than he, anyone I know yeah. of. But I mean, so if, if have a good center channel, folks. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, if you if you take that, you know, aspect of it out of it, I mean, the mixes are like they're almost like the super discreet quad mixes like back from the 70s. Like, you know, on every song, there's something happening like different in each corner. Heck yeah. You know, for each song. So, yeah, uh, just I, mixes. I am clearly on record as loving Bob Clear Mountain mixes. Um, I've mainly been exposed to his 5.1 stuff so far, but his 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 uh, studio is now fully set up for Atmos. So uh, I think he even indicated on like a recent uh, mixing project that he just skipped 5.1 and went straight to Atmos. So yeah, I think that's a good bet. And that would be interesting, the band doing a, a whole album of, of covers. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. This is a, not, not, not one that I really know a whole lot about, but if they do like the other ones and they remix it and they put it out, I'll probably give it a listen. I'll probably give it a shot. This next artist. I get beat up every, by viewers every time I say his name. Oh, I mean, I say David Bowie. Okay. All right. So Bowie. David Bowie. All right. If anybody has a problem with that, blame Ryan. <laughs> um, Ziggy Stardust, really? Yeah. So um, towards the end of last year, 2022, we got a box set called Divine Symmetry which was basically a celebration and overlook of Hunky Dory. This was the first Bowie box set that I think actually had, and I have it, has a Blu-ray audio disc in it. Now, yeah, there's only one, one surround one song. One song in 5.1. <laughs> it is a very good mix. It's Life on Mars, which is one of Bowie's best tracks. Yeah, It's not the original recording with all the parts, all the arrangements as people remember it. It's basically a stripped down mix, which, which basically has all the best elements in it because it's got Bowie's voice, it's got Rick Wakeman's amazing piano, and it's got those amazing string arrangements. That's it. So it's just one 5.1 mix of that song, just those elements. It is a very good mix. 
And I, I, I think it's a fantastic box set. I mean, there's just so much great stuff to go through um, that they included on the set for Hunky Dory. They've done similar things for earlier records. So I'm naturally thinking that they're going to do the same for Ziggy Stardust. Again, like some of these other releases that we've talked about, the anniversary year was actually last year in 2022. So they'd be a little bit behind. But right. the reason I put it in the list is because not only did the previous box set, Divine Symmetry, have a Blu-ray audio disc in it, but as we all know, Ziggy Stardust was already released and remixed in 5.1. So I would hope that if they put a box set out, that they at the very least would just include the 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 original 5.1 mix on the Blu-ray. Maybe with a little bit better mastering. To include. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I've got the 5.1 SACD of Ziggy, and I like it. Uh, I would hope if they do issue a Blu-ray, maybe they would improve the mastering a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so classic quad. Um, Dutton Vocalion is obviously, I mean, they've been just releasing stuff every year faithfully, mm -hmm. and then maybe Sony Japan. That's right. Yeah. So what um, main thing that Sony Japan have been putting out um, over the last couple of years, which has been a godsend for people who really love classic quad, especially on the SACD format, is they finally been the first label, the first one to show some initiative to actually put out these classic Santana quadraphonic mixes, which mm -hmm. not only the great albums, but I mean, the quad mixes are just so well loved and so well revered. Yeah. Um, I think there's at least one Santana record that was remixed. I'm sorry, it was released in 1973. I think it's the album called Welcome. Um, they have been following basically in the original release order, starting with that first record, Santana. And then they've made it up to uh, Caravanserai, I think is how you pronounce it, which originally came out in 72. So we got the Quad SACD last year. Um yep. So yeah, I mean those are those are great releases. They're really fun with the the seven inch packaging and all the little ephem ephemeral and stuff that come with it. Um, yep. And then as far as Dutton Vocalion goes, I mean honestly, it's just really too hard to predict what the heck they're going to release because I mean look, they they pretty much got access to it seems like the entire Sony Quad back catalog, which is hundreds and hundreds of records. Um, so yeah, I think that's been one of the cool things about their releases is almost kind of like the, the SDE surround series, almost like the old saying about Forrest Gump, the box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. I mean, I've just been constantly surprised at these classic quad releases that they managed to put out. Yeah, it is so fun. And they seem to, um, do a batch of classical or, you know, choral or classical or orchestral in one month and then like a month or two or three later they'll do a batch of more like pop uh like light rock easy listening funk 70s you know just <laughs> 70s random type of you know more pop oriented stuff so i would imagine that we would get at least one batch each this year and maybe more yeah i'd hope so i mean you know for people who love those releases and i know there's so many out there who do quite rightfully so. I mean, they're great value for the money. Most of them, if they can fit two albums on a disc, they do it. You know, so I mean, it's just yes, phenomenal. they've they've released a lot of twofers, but then recently they've also been releasing like four albums, yeah. like in one release, like Chris Christopherson. So yeah, um, I'm I'm excited about whatever uh you know they feel like releasing. Whether I go in for like one album per batch or like all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that they're simply doing it. I have a growing collection of like quad vinyl and often uh, the SACD that I'm getting from them is, you know, like uh, I already have th the analog. And so I get to compare like, you know, the, the improved clarity, the improved separation, uh, the improved convenience, you know, like less cleaning, less pops and clicks and, you know, all that stuff, less wear. So definitely yeah, looking absolutely. definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to uh to both. Um Sony Japan. Uh I am just in love with those Santana releases. And then uh they've also done Jeff Beck, Billy Joel, Carol King, yep. Toto. So who knows what's coming? 
That's right. Yep. Um, surprise, surprise. Yep. REM, you, you think they'll do up? Yeah. Um, from from what I've kind of gathered, at least I, ha I definitely haven't heard anything to the contrary. Um, seems like they're basically wanting to continue with this uh, 25th anniversary release series that they've been doing. Um, and this year is the 25th anniversary of Up. Um, as many people know, there's already a 5.1 mix of it. So just like previous releases deluxe editions uh if they do a 25th anniversary of up which i'm sure they will then i'm sure they'll do a blu-ray again include the 5.1 mix include the music videos include other video footage and other stuff that they've had and again i mean th these are not releases that are you know setting the world on fire by any means but i have all of these recent uh reissues with the blu-ray and i just think they're phenomenal sets great value wonderful material not too big not too expensive yeah um, Really, really a great way to uh, to get some of these releases and some of these mixes again if you're having trouble finding the original DVD audios. Well, so I'm someone who has all the original DVD audios, and mm -hmm. then I have been going in for some of the Blu-ray reissues, like New Adventures in Hi-Fi. Yep. So um, I still haven't been tempted to offer up my DVDAs you know, for resale or whatever, but it could happen. So, yeah. you know, that could free up some of those DVD audio stock, um, you know, people finally willing to, to offer them up for resale. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We have a little bit more speculation. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I did read somewhere recently, I think on a um, yes fan website or fan forum that the group is apparently working on another new record. A lot of people will know that the, previous album of theirs which came out in 2021 which is called the quest um they actually did mix that one in 5.1 and they offered it to us on a blu-ray and so i'm hoping that um whatever whatever new material they come up with uh that they'll do the same um i can't remember if i've actually listened to the whole record yet i have the the release i have the 5.1 mix i did go to their concert a few months ago and they played a couple of newer songs some of the earlier tracks on the record they sounded great live, and so I went and checked out the Blu-ray again, and it's a pretty good record from what I've heard so far. Very good mixing, um, so hopefully that trend continues. Opeth. Opeth, yeah, this one is very speculative. Haven't really heard anything, but um, I did uh, realize or think that I think their last record came out in 2019, which was about yeah. four years ago, so I think, I, 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 think, I think we're due for another new record of theirs pretty soon. I love Opeth. I've been to three of their concerts. They're one of my favorite newer groups. Um, their new records, the music itself has been fantastic. They've had a really great streak of really good albums. Obviously, as you know, the surround mixes can be a little hit or miss, especially if Stephen Wilson's not involved. But yeah, for sure. If, if, if they release something this year, especially in surround, I'll check it out. So the last album, uh, if you are able to track down the Swedish version, that surround mix... Uh actually does it for me i think it has some added elements like especially added vocal layers mm -hmm. which make it more interesting than the english mix to my yeah name. absolutely so although I'll, my... I'll, 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 although at least for me the problem with the swedish one is that you can't understand it but maybe may, maybe that's not the point you know so <laughs> steve hackett okay yeah so um again this one's kind of speculative but as it turns out i did see i think it was a facebook and instagram post from steve hackett with a guitar around his neck at his house you know basically saying you know getting ready to record the next record um and he's actually a lot of people know he's actually been on pace he's been putting out a, a new record like almost every other year and the yeah, last and then a tour albums, a record and yeah, a tour exactly and and the last couple of albums of, from his have had 5.1 mixes mainly on blu-ray so hopefully right. any other new material we get from him uh would do the same absolutely yeah, I I have been uh, just in love with a lot of the concerts that that he's put out in the last decade. Um, both his solo stuff and revisiting Genesis material. Uh, the vi mixes have varied a little bit, but uh, Stephen Wilson did uh, one of the most recent ones. And, he did. Um, it's among it my favorite concert mixes uh, on this planet. Yeah, absolutely. Now I've I've gone back and I've I've bought basically every uh Steve Hackett live Blu-ray from the time he started doing the Genesis Revisited tours about 10 years ago up until now. And yeah, you're right. Mix quality does kind of vary from release to release, but one thing that doesn't vary, thankfully, is the quality of the music 
and also the quality of the musicianship. Oh, the uh, band. The yeah. Bands. Yeah. They're no slouches. Nope. <laughs> All right. No sound. Okay. Yeah. Th this one again is kind of speculative, but um, our good friend, uh, John, Paul, John Carlo era, you know, who's the main singer and songwriter of that band. He does right. all of his own 5.1 mixing. He's a member of QQ. We love him a lot. Um, I think if I'm not mistaken, the last no sound studio record came out maybe about four or five years ago. So I have a feeling that we're probably due for another, you know, new release from them pretty soon is what I'm guessing. I've got quite a bit of uh, no sound in surround. So I'm yep, very, very uh, excited about the possibility of that. Yep. Same here. All right. So a favorite label of mine, 2L. Uh, they've already released a schedule of six albums. Uh, I may or may not have already heard one. Yggdrasil. Yggdrasil. Uh, I think that's Swedish for uh, the the world tree. And um, if I have heard it, it's beautiful. And definitely uh, I'll be I'll be reviewing that. Uh, there's also a title called Pax, which if it has any resemblance to the album from last year, I believe called Lux, I would just be in heaven. I love 2L. Like, what do you know about 2L? You know, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I feel like this is like the one thing on this, you know, list uh, that I really don't know much of anything about. Maybe because I think uh, from what I understand, they're kind of more in the, maybe more in the classical vein from what I understand. Maybe some classical, maybe like some world music, things like that. Um, yes, you're not wrong. Well, I mean, the one the one thing that I do know about him, I have heard, you know, the name Morton Lindbergh before. Um, it seems to me that every single year that the list of Grammy nominations, you know, when it comes out, it used to be called Best Surround Sound Album, but I think it's now called Best Immersive Album. Probably Immersive, yeah. He has at least one, if not more than one, release like in those Grammy nominations like every single year. Well deserved. I am hoping that two Vaihun uh, wins for this year. In my opinion, it's the most exciting uh, on the list. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some links to some of my 2L reviews, because if I can get you fired up about any label, like I, I feel like I would be doing you a service like uh, so 2L. Yeah, it's it tends to be um, orchestral or choral. Um, it can be uh, classical, at least in its feel, but it is um, usually modern composers working with Norwegian choirs and musicians and they select the location usually like a like a cathedral they they match the material to the performers to the location and then mic it uh exquisitely uh just record the space naturally and then um all that Morton well, I don't want to say all that he does, but basically what he does is he just brings up the faders and you are just there in the cathedral. And I and the the amount of attention that they give to sound quality all through the chain and then the amount of choices that you get, usually for about the price of a normal album, you get a hybrid multi-channel SACD. Um, I think there's an MQA option on there somewhere, uh, maybe on the CD layer. Um, then you get a Blu-ray with high res, lossless, stereo 5.1, Atmos, and RO3D. Like you are covered, like however you want to experience uh, these titles. And then um, as far as the, you know, the music um, taste goes, uh, I audition a lot of their stuff. I tend to go in for about half of what they release. And the ones that I go for, though, I love like with a passion. I would love to turn you on to at least four or five of their titles. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe that's something I'll have to, uh, you know, find the time and the money to check out in uh, twenty twenty three. It, it, it's 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 the year for you. <laughs> for absolutely, well. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Um, all right, and then uh, the last couple of categories that I was hoping we could cover a little bit would be immersive audio album. You mentioned mm -hmm. um, that site earlier, and I think probably Jonathan, our friend Jonathan, did that yep. or that interview. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he's been doing an amazing job for them in terms of like research and authoring, you know, um, reviews and doing interviews and stuff. Um, any kind of sense for what they may be posting for download? No, I mean, the thing is, is that um, a lot of a lot of the stuff that I'm familiar with on that particular site is maybe stuff that's already been previously released, like on DVD, audio and Blu-ray, like there's some Catatonia stuff on there. There's some Pineapple Thief stuff on there, other artists like that. There's. Um, oh, man, the. Um, the, the the singer and songwriter's name escapes me. I'm gonna think of it in a second, but it's uh it's Bird Song at Morning. Uh they have a lot of the Bird Song at Morning um stuff on there as well, too. So yeah, I'll be watching immersive audio album just to see like if they pop up something kind of shiny and exciting that you can't get anywhere else. And or like um sometimes what they do is when they offer up a title, like it may have been lossy on DVD, like back in the day. And now all of a sudden you're getting um, the lossless upgrade. So I'll be watching Immersive Audio Album uh, just to see what they have going on. And then um, surroundmusic.one is a site that I haven't uh, talked about in quite a while. Uh, I actually have an album up there. Uh, It's run by Jan Prince. I believe he's out of Netherlands or maybe Denmark. don't get mad at me on if I got it wrong. Uh, but anyway, lovely guy. His intent ever since he started surroundmusic.one was it to basically be like the band camp for surround sound. And now there are so many titles up there, like I can't even keep up. So, you know, I just hope um, to make people uh, aware that surroundmusic.one is there. And uh, it's been a while uh, that Jan and I have, have collaborated on anything. I'll, I'll reach out to him and see if he wants me to showcase anything from his site, because I think it would be great to uh, sustain traffic on his initiative there. Uh, That brings us to the end of what we had prepared to talk about. I appreciate you joining me on on the show. And yeah, anything that you want to impart to to viewers? Um, Well, look, I mean, obviously, you know, just like any year, you know, that I, you know, kind of do these lists or put these lists together with the help of others. I mean, a lot of it is speculation, so um, there's guaranteed to be some great triumphs this year. Um, there's going to be some disappointments, too. Those disappointments could be things that we could expect to come out, and then they don't happen. Of course, the other disappointment could be that something does come out musically or mix-wise that doesn't meet our expectations. So, um, But I think that's one of the things that's kind of cool about you know putting these lists together is kind of seeing what could happen, then getting towards the end of the year, seeing what did happen, seeing what didn't happen. But then at the same time, there's also always things that creep in out of nowhere that we just do not expect. So that's one of the other fun things is all of a sudden when a new release comes along out of nowhere and we get to enjoy it. So, but yep, hopefully there'll be a lot of great things to look forward to this coming year for sure. Uh, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Uh, we have briefly, like over the years, but uh, to just really kind of dig in and and share some of this enjoyment, because that's what this is all about. I think one of the other exciting things about this coming year is obviously the continued explosion of Atmos and the fact that for the last year or so, we now have three streaming providers, Amazon Music, Tidal, and especially Apple Music. There's yeah. a ton of Atmos mixes, um, some in you know better mix quality than others, but there's that. Sure. But there's a ton of Atmos mixes that are streaming exclusively, you know, on these providers. I think it's opened up the door for a lot of Atmos mixes, you know, from old albums, new albums, et cetera, that we probably wouldn't get otherwise. It's been uh, great to talk with you about about music and surround and immersive. Uh, I've I've really loved it. Same here. Thank you so much for having me on. And uh, I hope people enjoy this video. And I hope just like we do and like a lot of other people out there, you know, when, when, when these releases come out, look, I mean, sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, you know, depending on how they package them, how expensive they are or whatever. But seriously, you know, the, the more, the more we continue to, buy these releases then hopefully the more we'll get of them so 
you know, I hope I hope people are ready to enjoy 2023 as I am. And thank you again for having me on. It's been a pleasure. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, notification bell, comments, share the video, all that stuff. And until next time, live life in surround.